So we're here at Sydney Motorsport Park for the announcement of the Toyota GR86 race series, but we've also had a preview of the new generation Toyota GR86, which is here in all black, looking rather classy. Toyota won't tell us kind of anything about the car yet. It won't go on sale to customers and, until soon, and it won't actually be on sale and launched officially until late Q3 or early Q4, so we've still got quite some time to wait for this car. It is different to the Subaru BRZ, mainly in the chassis tuning, and that's what Toyota is spending a lot more time investing their energies in making that perhaps better, or who knows. We did get two laps of the car around the track, but that's it in this spec here, which again is unspecified, but I can tell you it is the GDS. It has all the trick stuff. It has heated seats inside. It has a little spoiler on the back. This is the top spec model. So when you look at the new gen GR86 and compare it against the BRZ, I think there's even less changes than there were before. You really need to be a train spotter. And I'm not like in the 90s movie, I mean an actual train spotter, picking out all those tiny details. And really the biggest change is this here, the shape of the grill air intake in the front of it here. And the Subaru, it comes up this way, and the Toyota, it goes that way. And we've got GR badges, and this shape here is slightly different, but only in the lower part of it. The upper part's the same, the headlights are the same, the bonnet pressing is the same. On this GTS spec here, even the wheels are the same. Now before, the GT had smaller wheels than the GDS, but I think you can probably expect, as per the two specs of the Subaru BRZ, that the Toyota GT will either have these wheels or very similar to before. The rest of the side of the car is a dead ringer for the BRZ. No surprises there, they're made in the same factory, um, a Subaru factory, mind you. And at the rear of the car here, again, it's very similar. The tail lights are the same, the whole bumper bar and the lower garnish is identical or near identical to the Subaru, but we obviously have to the Toyota badge and the really cool GR86 here. We don't have the old cool little Boxer 86 badge on the side anymore. It is just a little bit simpler. Uh, Toyota also said that where the old GDS had sort of a tacked on spoiler, which you either loved or hated, personally, I hated it. Let us know what you think. This time it is integrated into the boot lid. And I think that in itself makes this generation a lot classier. Although over its lifetime, these details will change. It'll get different tail lights. It'll have other things happen and there'll be aftermarket stuff you can tweak if you think this is too plain. But that's what having a coupe like this is about, making it your own and having fun. So as I've already mentioned, the announcement of when you can actually put your name down or order a new Toyota GR86 is gonna come soon, probably by June, it's now April in Australia right this moment. We found out yesterday that the first allocation in the UK sold out in 90 minutes with no announcement of when any more is coming. So this is very much an in-demand car. You're gonna to need to keep an eye out if you wanna actually secure one quickly. Um, yeah, the launch is late Q3, early Q4. So at the moment, September or October, but that could easily blow out based upon all the supply shortages we're suffering at the moment. It will be a two model lineup with a manual and automatic transmission, exactly like the BRZ lineup, but with a Toyota flavor, and then with likely accessories to go on top of that. Inside the GR86, it is very much the same as the Subaru BRZ, and <laughs> there's no surprise about that. But there are some distinct differences, and I actually think I like this interior a little bit better. The things that stand out are the red stitching around the steering wheel with this GR badge down the bottom here, also, we have red stitching on the handbrake and the gear boot here, this being a six-speed automatic, the only one we've driven so far, only for two laps around the track. But where this GR86 GTS, or so we think, stands out is that it has red carpet. This carpet here is actually quite plush, and like an 80s French hot hatch, I think red carpet really suits the sort of car this is. This interior has a lot more colour than its equivalent BRZ version, which you know, the Coupe S does have a stripe down the middle of these sort of perforated suede seats. You can bet we're in the top spec model here because we do have the two setting seat heating here, which is in the top spec BRZ. Also got GR on the start button. We got a little GR instrument display when you hit the start and start it up, but the instruments are identical to the Subarus, which means the sort of the analog-esque 
digital taco with the speedometer in the middle or when you hit track down here you get the strip taco and the speed below. Probably should point out though that the red carpet has been alluded to as being an option although if I was specking the car I'd make it standard because it looks great. We also don't have any branding on the stereo so you can expect that like the BRZ you're going to get this sort of quite synthetic audio sound from this reasonably classy but not exactly high-end multimedia system. I kind of wish that that was something, but that might happen during the life of the car. So we were only given the opportunity to drive this pre-production model here for two laps around the track because it's not registered and the car is not launched. So it's a preview of what we think of the new GR86. What is taking the time for the GR86 to launch is that Toyota has chosen to be a lot more stringent I suppose on the suspension tune of this car. Subaru is happy with the way the BRZ is and so are we because that car handles exceptionally well. Uh, it just has that lovely fluidity, suppleness combined with progression and control that eluded the old car, fun as it was. Now when you compare the two back to back it feels a little bit immature. So it'll be interesting to see what Toyota achieves with the GR86 because what we know of this generation of car was already really good. Now the basics will be the same. What is fundamentally driving this car is that the structure is so much stronger. It's 60% stiffer in sort of lateral rigidity at the front and 50% overall in torsional rigidity. So having the strength of that basis to work from means you can have a stronger body with softer suspension but still have precision in the handling as the BRZ has proven. Around here we drove this BRZ automatic which we think is the top spec GDS and much like the Subaru it demonstrated the fact that it has so much more mid corner grip that it can actually progressively add power out of corners using sport mode but with ESC fully on this car still manages to add some oversteer front end of corners. You can drive it on the throttle and enjoy that slight tail out attitude. You can be ham fisted with it in that you can be very stabby on the throttle and it will go quite a bit sideways before the stability control grabs it and that's not even in track DSC, that's in just regular fully on mode which I think is good for a car like this. It lets it be playful without kind of killing the fun like ESC does in so many other Toyotas, which is a little bit disappointing, but not in this car, and that's really what matters. Uh, I love the interior of it. That red carpet is totally enough for me. If any Japanese sports coupe wants to pretend to be a Peugeot 205 GDI, then I'm totally cool with that, and I don't know why they wouldn't make it standard, so let's hope that that does happen. Under the bonnet is the same FA24 2.4 litre port and direct injected flat four which is in the Subaru, 174 kilowatts at 7,000 RPM, 250 newton meters at 3,700. And that is exactly the same in the six-speed manual and the six-speed automatic, both of which are the same transmissions as before, but have had a lot of work. The manual with its linkages and ratios and what have you, the automatic that we're driving here with its calibration. And I did two laps around the track here, pretty much as fast as I could go bar, sort of drilling the brakes and driving it too hard and just left it in drive in sport mode. And the auto did a terrific job. It actually proves that having a six speed makes sense, especially with an engine like this where it actually has a mid range and torque, unlike the dip in the old engine. So you're not constantly changing gears all the time. It really felt quite effortless and really quite intelligent in the way that it downshifted and that. Personally, I'd still buy the manual, but you couldn't really pick on anyone for buying the automatic because they're still buying a really good transmission in this instance. As for the rest of the car, it's as per the Subaru. It would be interesting to see a back-to-back -back comparison of the two. I suspect that Toyota has aimed for more oversteer in the GR86 just like they did with the last generation. If you can recall, the Subaru tune had a little bit more neutrality about it. It didn't oversteer as readily as the Toyota, certainly not the base car on those Prius EcoSpec tyres, which won't be the case here. I can reckon that the GT will have the same wheels and tyres Michelin Pilot Sport 4 as the GDS. So that sort of grippy, progressive controllability will very much feature in this new car. 
Um, so yeah, I think a little bit more oversteer on the track than I think the Subaru would deliver, but then the Subaru is also quite tailly when you want it to be. So until this car actually launches and we do them back to back, we won't know for sure. But as it stands right now, the Toyota has a few points of design and visual difference. And as per before, choose your favorite brand, but both of them will be great. So if you haven't subscribed to Chasing Cars, please do so below the video, hit the notification bell and tell us what you think about the Toyota versus Subaru thing. Would you choose the Toyota over the Subaru just because the Toyota is a bit cooler? The dealer network? Let us know your thoughts. I personally wouldn't really care either way, but I do think that this GDS spec here with the red carpet and the few bits in the interior is a little bit more visually interesting than the Coupe S Subaru BRZ. Thanks for watching.